We're at 3.4a multiplying rational numbers with different signs. We can multiply rational numbers by multiplying the absolute values of the numbers then using these rules. If there are an even amount of negative factors, the product is positive. We have two negative factors, we have a positive product. We have four negative factors, we have a positive product. If there's an odd amount of negative factors, the product is negative. Here we only have one negative factor, that's an odd amount of negative factors, we have a negative product. Here we have a positive and three negative, three negative factors is an odd amount. We have a negative 24, that's a negative product. The rules for signs of products with different signs are summarized in this chart. We're going to let P and Q be rational numbers. So these are the products of rational numbers. Here's the sign of factor P, because P and Q are our factors. If it's positive and Q is negative, the sign of P times Q is going to be negative. If P is negative and Q is positive, then P times Q is negative. Notice there's one negative factor for each of these, and they have a negative product. We can also determine the sign of a product by remembering that multiplication is repeated addition. We have 2 times a negative 3. That means we have negative 3 2 times. We have a negative 3 plus a negative 3. They have like signs for the add-ins. That means the sum is going to be like the add -in. so we have a negative 6. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And we only have one negative factor. We know the product will be negative. We can take their absolute values and do 2 times 3, which is 6. See that there's one negative. We know we have a negative 6. So looking ahead to algebra, these are some indications that multiplication is involved. When variables are next to each other, like an a next to a b, or a p next to a q, or an x next to a y, we know that multiplication is involved. This means a times b, and p times q, and x times y. Remember, variables are just letters of the alphabet that take the place of an unknown amount. If we have a number next to a variable, like 2a, it means 2 times whatever a's value is, 3 times whatever p is. Or, we'll see a number or variable is next to parentheses. This is 2 times 3. 3 times 2, y. This is 2 times y, isn't it? We're going to multiply that by 3. Here we have p times 2q. And if parentheses are next to parentheses, this is 2 times 3. This is negative 3 times 4 times 2. So here's our first example. Tala hiked down a mountain and stopped each time she descended three-fourths mile to rest. She rested four times. What was her overall change in elevation? So be careful. What we're looking for is her overall change in elevation from where she was when she started and where she was when she finished. We use a negative number for the change in elevation between each rest, so we have a negative three-fourths. She's coming down the mountain, three-fourths mile, she rests, she does another three-fourths mile, rests, she does that four times. She rested four times, so our equation is four times a negative three-fourths. Because she's descending, the change in elevation is a negative number. We have a number line, we begin at zero, and because she's coming down the mountain, we're going into the negatives, we're going to move left. 3 fourths unit, 4 times. The result is negative 3. The overall change in elevation is negative 3 miles. Now, don't get confused. This is not a distance. Distances are always positive. This is a change in elevation in miles. We can check our answer by using the rules for multiplying rational numbers. We have a positive and a negative, so we know the product is going to be a negative. And there's an odd amount of negative factors, so our product is negative. We can write 4 as a 4 over a 1 for a fraction, 
and we're going to multiply straight across. We have 4 times a negative 3. That's going to be a negative 12, and 4 times 1 is 4. We have negative 12 fourths. We simplify that to negative 3. Here it's telling us to use a number line to find 2 times negative 4 and 5 tenths. We begin at 0, and we have negative 4 and 5 tenths 2 times. So we're going to go negative 4 and 5 tenths, that's negative 4 and a half. We come here, and we do another 4.5. That's going to put us at negative 9. 2 times negative 4 and 5 tenths is equal to negative 4 and 5 tenths plus negative 4 and 5 tenths. We have 2, negative 4 and 5 tenths. It's equal to negative 9. They have like signs, so it's like the add ends. Since multiplication is repeated addition, the product is a sum of two negative numbers. The positive 2 is just the number of add ends. This 2 is telling us we have two of them. Any sum of negative numbers is negative. So, as repeated addition, we have a negative sum. We have a negative product. Let's try one last one. It says use a number line to find 3 times negative 2 thirds. We begin at 0, and we move left, because we're going into the negatives, 3 times. We move left 2 thirds units. These are split into thirds. We go 1 third, 2 thirds. So that's our first arrow. We're going to do it three times. We go one-third, two-thirds. We have our arrow. One-third, two-thirds. We land at negative two. Three times negative two-thirds is equal to negative six-thirds. If we were to do it like this, we could say three times two is six. It's a negative, so we're going to have a negative here. One times three is three. We have a negative six-thirds. It's equal to negative two. We can even do it with repeated addition and say negative two-thirds plus negative two-thirds plus negative two-thirds. We're going to have a negative six-thirds, which is equal to negative two. As multiplication, we have one negative factor, so we know the product will be negative. If we do it as repeated addition, any sum of a negative number is negative. So one more time, here's the rules for multiplying different signs. If we have a positive times a negative, the product is negative. If we have a negative times a positive, it's negative. We have one odd amount of negative factors, it's going to be negative. So if there's an even amount of negative factors, it will be positive. If there's an odd amount of negative factors, it's going to be negative. Counting how many negative factors are in the equation will tell us if we need to have a positive or negative product. We finished part A. We're going to move on to part B, multiplying rational numbers with the same sign. Now we're going to see what happens when we multiply with the same sign. If you can remember to count the negative factors and use that even-odd rule, you'll be able to go quicker, okay? Have a great day, and please join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.